What's up everyone, it's Jake here and welcome back to Almost Vintage Style. Today we are going to be talking about leather jackets and specifically the comparison between vintage jackets and reproduction jackets. Pros and cons and just general differences and things you might want to look for to see, um, maybe to choose between the two types. But also, because most people are going to be going with repros, um, because it's more difficult to find vintage and it's just easier to go for repros. Uh, what kind of differences are you going to expect and how authentic can you expect your reproduction jacket to be? Okay, um, so right now I am wearing a jacket that I will do like a more specific review of eventually. Uh, I just want to have it for a longer period of time. I have already had it for uh, like eight months or so. This is probably one of like the most important jackets I could possibly have. It is the original Sears Hercules jacket, which I cannot believe I actually own this jacket. It is very, very hard to get one of these. Um, and when I say the original Sears Hercules, this is a 1939 to 1940 model. Um, it is not in perfect condition. The zippers have all been replaced. The liner has been replaced. Um, there are definitely a lot of stitching like flaws and uh, issues with it, but the leather is just so exceptional. And the fact that it is an actual authentic Sears Hercules from the 1930s or 1940 at the latest um, is absolutely exceptional and very rare. So this is like, this is the jacket that started, um, like what we, a lot of people say this is the jacket that kind of made modern leather jackets or like started the golden age of leather jackets from like the mid to late 1930s until like 1942, basically. Um, and it has like the actual fancy back that you might recognize from certain makers. So like a lot of makers make a version of this jacket. I mean, Goodwear makes it. Now Himmel Brothers makes that using the same pattern that Goodwear made. Um, uh, Rainbow Country makes one. Uh, I believe McCoy's has made something like this or very similar or the same in the past. Bill Kelso makes one. There's a lot of people that make this type of jacket or will make something kind of similar but not exactly the same as this jacket, but I own an actual original, um, which I am very proud of, and I am, yes, I'm kind of bragging about that a little bit, but I'm sorry, I can't help it. Now, there's crazier, you know, more insane and more special jackets people own, but I'm very proud of owning this jacket, and it does actually fit me really well, and I do wear it. Um, okay, so now, that thing I said about the stitching and flaws and everything, that brings you to the first con of vintage leather jackets, is condition. So, if you're going to get a new jacket, like a repro, uh, almost, unless your repro maker is a complete joke, uh, your condition of your um, repro jacket will be better than the vintage jacket in most cases. Um, vintage jackets, even ones in very good condition, are you know they're still used, they're still old. It's very rare that you're going to get something perfectly 100% dead stock that has no flaws. Especially if it's a rare and desirable jacket like this, you know that's just probably not going to happen. You know this jacket has a lot of flaws. Um, they like restitched it in a bunch of places it needed repairs done. It still needs more repairs done technically. Um, you know, the leather is trying to flake in some places. Overall, the leather is absolutely gorgeous. There is no modern leather that I've ever handled that's as nice as this. But, you know, the, the condition is not great. It's not perfect. It, it has flaws. It will need more repairs throughout its lifetime. And, you know, it's more of a project. It's a little more delicate in that way. Now, not all my jackets are like, so I'm looking at some of my other jackets right now, like, you know, this jacket, this is my early 1950s Windward horsehide jacket, and overall this one's in much better condition than my Sears is. Now, it's still, again, it's not perfect. The liner, like the quilting stitching is constantly coming undone. You can probably see that here, not per very far from perfect. Um, you can see this dirt here that was you know there when I got it and uh, also it's missing like a zipper pull here that somebody you know had to jerry-rig some string on as a replacement so it's not perfect but uh, this one's definitely much better but again still got issues right and that's just what's going to happen with vintage jackets if you want something that's going to just work and not have, you're not going to worry about anything then you're going to want to go with the repro okay um, now, uh, the other thing is pricing. Now, pricing is a bit odd because it's very dependent. You can get vintage leather jackets that aren't the super desirable models, 
definitely for less money than you're going to get a repro for because the repros are all fairly expensive especially of the more desirable models and especially the repros that are actually worth anything that are actually fairly accurate um, those are all going to be a thousand plus so up to two three thousand dollars or more depending on the maker so in that sense it's going to be much more expensive to go that route in most cases now there are exceptions um if you're trying to get a leather togs a vintage leather togs first of all good luck even finding one second of all good luck being able to afford one um if you can more power to you uh, i'm jealous but you know they are extremely expensive to be even be able to find one and then you get into getting the issues of condition and will it is it the right size for you etc etc if you get a freewheelers jacket which also ironically good luck finding a freewheelers jacket right now but let's just assume freewheelers actually restarts production anytime soon they're all, one of your only options for getting a real leather togs like repro jacket nowadays you do also have feel leathers um and uh some other lesser makers but uh, you know, now if you want certain things like a Peters or a, there's also an actual Peters tailor-made brand name now in Japan that is making Peters style jackets. Um, if you want a Peters, you could also, you know, look for Freewheelers and then also uh, Field Leathers is doing that now too. So now there's more options. So you can get a new one or like a repro of it. You basically cannot get the originals of some of these. Um, these also, if you want a real Hercules, um, first of all, if you want a brown one, those are, seem to be rare. I pretty much only exclusively ever see the black ones for sale. A buddy of mine um, who hooked me up with the person who sold me this jacket, uh, he said he'd been looking for one of these jackets for like six to eight years and hadn't found one yet. And now just recently he was able to get one. I think he actually was able to get two. But that was after eight years of searching or something like that. So that's you got to be really patient. Um, if you want a new one, you can call, you know, call it field leathers and maybe there's a year long wait, but at least you know you're gonna get a jacket in that time period, right? Um, so that's another thing. It's just being able to obtain the jacket is going to be easier if you're going for a repro. Even though some of the makers are, you know, their stuff will sell out quickly and the better brands are, or a lot of hype brands are more popular and difficult to get to, it's still more possible to get it uh, versus a lot of the repro jackets. Unless, sorry, the vintage jackets. Unless you're going with a vintage model that or brand that isn't like super, super desirable, super rare. Like if you just want a nice, like, you know, vintage black motorcycle jacket that fits you well, well then you've got a lot of options with vintage. You don't, if you don't need a certain brand name, you know, if you want like this kind of durable slash perfecto style of motorcycle jacket, cross it, there's a lot of options. I have this one, I have one from Sportclad that they both look almost, you know, same kind of style. They just fit differently, have different details. Um, and you can go for stuff like that. Also, that brings us to another interesting difference is that there are certain jackets that you can only get with like newer makers or vintage, right? So there's certain newer jackets that just aren't repros of anything. They're kind of semi repros that have been modified or changed to be, you know, a new type of jacket, right? Himmel Brothers does a lot of that. Um, Thetty is another one where they're not even really a repro maker, right? So if you want something that's like oh, kind of vintage inspired, but you know, changed to be something different. I've, Field Others does that too. Arrow does. I mean, most of them have something where it's like kind of maybe an amalgamation of different vintage jackets. I'd say Rainbow Country does that too, Feel, uh, Freewheelers does it, almost every, uh, McCoy's I think does too. A lot of them will do like slightly different versions. If you like that version, then, then you might want to stick with that, right? Um, but also, if you want something unique that um, repro makers don't really bother with, you know, something like this, very, very simple, jacket with the gathered sides and the what I call Spongebob square pockets these really cool kind of square pockets yes I think maybe one or two vintage make or repro makers will make something like this also the collar here is really beautiful really large collar pointy collar you know it's you're probably not gonna find repro makers bothering to make something like this and this jacket yeah, the condition is not perfect, but the stitching and the construction on this jacket are exceptional. It's actually better than most repro makers. So, you know, if you want something like that, 
you're probably gonna have to go vintage with some kind of quirkier jacket designs. So that's another thing. Another big difference is the actual accuracy. Now this is, some people are gonna be upset about this, but I've actually handled and seen quite a few of the Hercules repros because I've always loved this jacket. This is kind of like, you know, that quintessential half belt jacket. Um, none of them get the pattern right, okay? Now that I own one, this is a real one. I own a real one. Uh, none of them get the pattern right. Now, a lot of this is not, in some cases when people do repros, sometimes they don't actually have the vintage patterns. Um, so they can't do a perfect repro of it. Uh, you know, Field Leathers, I'm going to be honest, like he does a lot of amazing things and he's definitely going more like, the, he goes the custom measurement route. So if you're getting that, just know that he's not going to make you a perfect repro of it. He's going to make, you know, his repro slash version of it that will fit you well, right? And that's probably what most people prefer. I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all, okay? But it's not going to be a perfectly vintage accurate jacket. I've seen his repros of like the leather tog stuff and you know, um, it's very, very good, it's, but it's not going to be exactly the same. And that's true for any of the makers. Even people that have handled, brands that have owned and handled actual like these jackets, these actual Sears Hercules jackets, they don't actually get perfect repros of them, okay? Um, now that might be partly on purpose, but they can't do it. They don't do it. This jacket is very unique in that it has like a very, very odd kind of paunch to it here in like the stomach area. That's just how this jacket was made originally. And if you see vintage authentic pictures of guys wearing these jackets with it zipped up, that's how it's going to look. Um, I personally, as a result of that, I tend to not like, I either leave it unzipped, it doesn't, it's not as bad when you do that, or I do what actually I've noticed in vintage photos people kind of, guys tend to do a lot, is they actually kind of just zip their jackets up kind of not that much, like at the bottom, and then actually the issue is kind of gone for me. I kind of like how that looks anyway. I do that on other jackets that I don't need to do this with now because I just actually kind of like this look. It's kind of, kind of a cool vintage look. Um, now, yes, am I compensating for a weird quirk with this jacket? Yes. Um, but do I also kind of love that in a weird way because that makes this jacket, you know, very unique and interesting and lets me know that I have an authentic jacket? Yeah. Uh, at the same time, yes. Now, most of the, I've heard of, and I know that most of the makers who repro this jacket, they've taken away that part of the pattern on purpose because it's not very flattering. and people who don't know about that stuff, which is most people buying the repro jackets, they're not gonna want that. They're gonna be annoyed that it has that. So I get it, I understand. But if you want authenticity, you have to know that that's gonna be out the window in certain ways. Also, if you buy like the Rainbow Country version, especially the Japanese ones, or if you buy a custom one, you know the pattern's gonna be different. It's not gonna be correct because it's either been customized to you, which again, that might be more than worth it. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, or they changed it to fit a certain body type, especially with the Japanese jackets. Like you look at the measurements, and I've tried on the Rainbow Country Hercules, it's longer by a pretty significant margin for the chest size. It does not match up at all. Um, it is longer and more tubular, um, and the sleeves are a little bit slimmer too, I would say as well. That's another big thing. Like if you look at old jackets, like compare them to new ones, like vintage jackets versus new ones, the sleeves are usually slimmer. Now in fairness, like the 30 style jackets like this, which that's what this is, um, the sleeves are not as wide as they are on like later 40s and into 50s jackets. Those just sleeves can be very wide. So it does depend on era with vintage jackets, but just in general, I mean, you can get some really skinny sleeve jackets in new jackets uh, and repro stuff that you know, for some people is not an issue at all, but for me can be an issue actually. And for people that are, you know, work lift more than me or stronger than me, be an issue for you too, right? Um, so that's another thing to be aware of, but they will like usually slim the sleeves down. Um, they will usually, the jackets will be longer and skinnier in the chest comparatively. And you know, they might miss little specific things that make the pattern unique. So that's another thing that will honestly probably be different. Another thing that will be different is the leather's not going to be exactly the same. 
Um, you might like the newer leathers more depending on which repro maker you go with and, and what kind of leather they have, but it's not going to be exactly the same. Um, in most cases, the vintage jackets, they're all gonna be chrome tanned or for the most part are chrome tanned or combination tanned. Um, it's, I don't think most of them were vegetable tanned. Uh, this leather, I mean, this is such an exceptional leather. I mean, that's why this jacket is so great despite the fact that it's not in amazing condition is because this leather is so thick and heavy. I don't know if you can tell that, but I, this is, there are heavier jackets out there, but this is the heaviest jacket that I currently have, and it's heavier than any of the repros I've ever personally owned. Maybe my, my 90s Vanson is as heavy as this, but that's like literally a competition weight cowhide that's made for riding a jacket, like serious riding. But this jacket is really heavy. Um, it's a very heavy, very thick horse hide. And you're just not going to get this anywhere else. Plus, if you're into vintage and you actually like the patina and the development and the aging of the leather, it's going to be different on a vintage jacket than it will be on a new one. And a lot of people do like that. Some people won't. If you want to break in your jacket yourself, make it your own, then you're not going to be able to do that with a vintage jacket unless you somehow get strike the, hit the lottery and get a dead stock one. Um, otherwise, you're going to want to break a new jacket in. You're only going to be able to do that with a repro. So that's another thing that's different. Okay. Um, overall, like if I'm looking at this objectively, uh, you're probably better off with a repro. Most people are going to be better off with a repro, okay? It'll depend on the specific brand, the specific jacket you want. Like if you like the look of certain 30s jackets, especially, it's really hard to find a lot of really of the good 30s, 1930s jackets, which are, you know, late 30s, early 40s, like the golden age of leather jackets. Um, it's really hard to get, you know, originals of those. Um, so if you see pictures of one, you want somebody to try to make a repro of it, then you can go with certain makers uh, that can try to do that for you. And then you, you know, would have to wait maybe years if you ever are able to find a vintage one. That also fits you and is also in decent enough condition to wear, right? Um, but also at the same time, you know, if you want to find some cool stuff that's unique and authenticity is never going to be the same, you know, with vintage jackets. So objectively for most people, you're going to be better off with a repro, but there are going to be differences. You're not going to get the exact perfect authenticity with that. Um, even if they really, really try, I don't really see almost anybody actually achieving that. Probably the closest to be good wear with their A2 jackets is probably the closest to actually achieving that level of authenticity. Um, and that's why a lot of the repro makers don't actually try and they don't actually do repros most of the time. A lot of them will make stuff very similar to vintage jackets, but then make some changes to just kind of make it more their own, which makes sense as well. I think that's very cool too. So, um, you know, there's definitely pros to vintage jackets. Um, I love them. They fit me better. That's one of the things is like, even when I tried to go custom with custom makers, I, because of the, just the way modern patterns are done, and I think just the way people think about them, they never have fit me as well as the vintage jackets fit me, because they're just designed differently, I feel like. So, I'm not saying I couldn't achieve a perfect fit with a, with a custom maker, but I've achieved better fits with the vintage jackets, right? Oh, another difference too is that a lot of repro makers love to put like really long front drops on their jackets. And a lot of customers like to put really long front drops on their jackets. Not often the case with a lot of vintage jackets. Yes, 30s jackets will tend to have a like a front drop, like so the front is kind of looks longer, like sits longer further down than the back does. Um, but it's usually more exaggerated on repros than it is on the originals. And also, depending on the era, there's actually a lot of vintage jackets where it doesn't have a front drop. Or actually, as the opposite of that, where the back is longer than the front, actually. So that's another thing. It's, it's kind of a weird thing that I've noticed. So just be aware of that, too. Um, you don't have to, if you don't, I don't love a long, super long front drop. This is like a slightly longer jacket for me. I think, it, I mean, I like it. It fits well. This is how it's supposed to fit. These half belt jackets are not supposed to be super short. Um, but, you know, that's just something to be aware of too. Okay, anyway, I hope this was helpful. I will be making more. I noticed people are responding very, very well to like these guides on leather jackets and trying to discuss differences. Um, so I will try to make more uh, videos like this in the future, more guides on this. But there's other stuff I want to talk about too. There's always like boots and, and I do want to do a big guide on hats as well. Let me know if you're interested in that. Like talk about like uh, baseball caps, um, 
wash caps and beanies, and then especially, you know, uh, fur felt, like, brim, full brimmed hats like this that I can, I definitely, because I wear a lot of hats, I can give you guides on what to look for and what brands and stuff like that and why to avoid wool when it comes to brimmed hats. So let me know if you're interested in that as well because I've wanted to do that but I'm not sure you know, people are actually gonna watch it. Um, and then I definitely wanna do my take on the Big Giant t-shirt video because everybody always makes like a guide to t-shirts and I swear I've worn more white t-shirts than all the other people who've made those videos so far. So I wanna do my take on that as well. Uh, so the, the jacket stuff will be coming. I think that's the thing people are most interested in right now but I have other stuff I do wanna talk about like with other stuff, right? All right, so anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.